Coach, I'm trying to think what I didn't ask you earlier, but as far as uh, what stood out most as far as plus and minuses from this game in San Diego State, as far as what you need to work on this week? I think the pluses were about the first, uh, probably the first 27 minutes of the first half offensively. I thought we got better with each possession. And I think as we improved and, and got some things going in both the triple option stuff we're doing and the spread stuff we're doing, I think we had San Diego State spin in a little bit at the end of the first half and got ourselves back into the game. Unfortunately, we couldn't finish that. Uh, on the negative side is, you know, our expectations are extremely high for who we are in defense. And I think if I had to point to one thing defensively, I would say that it was our ability to not to tackle. I think if we tackled better in that game, I think we would have stayed in the game a lot longer than we did. And then who knows once you get it to the fourth quarter. But uh, it's something we need to improve upon for this week, I can tell you that much. As far as uh, the big old Montana matchup, uh, what's the real focus this week to get ready for Montana? Focuses. Well, the, the focus is, again, we have to improve on some of the things that we did poorly just as a Cal Poly football team. Right? So I think one of them definitely is we'll work on tackling this week. We have to be able to tackle in space against what Montana does on, uh, on film. We have to be able to tackle in areas where there's going to be a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities for our secondary or our linebackers to make plays, and they have to be able to make the plays. Uh, so that's going to be one of them. I think secondly, I think to make sure that you know we understand who they are, they've changed a little bit offensively. So we're going to have to make some adjustments to who they are now and what they're trying to do. They're probably – more like Oregon maybe than any team in the country as far as what they're doing. So we're going to have to be ready for that. And I think defensively, any time uh, your defense holds the University of Tennessee to 80-something yards rushing and 40 carries, I mean, we got our work cut out because that's what we do. We run the football, and they were able to stop the University of Tennessee from running the football. And so uh, we have to find ways, and our offensive line is going to need a big, big day this weekend. Is it If you were to identify the, a unit or players that not worry the most, but as far as who you're focusing most on for Montana? Would it be their D line? Would it be you know their quarterback? Well, anytime you know, I think the the, the game. You know, I know it's the cliche, but the game is one up front. Anytime that you hold an opponent to the running yards that they held Tennessee to, you got to give their front seven definitely has our. The, you know, we're concerned about how good they are at linebacker and defensive line. And I think on the other side of the ball, the, all their entire offensive line returns, and they're probably 6'4", 6'. Six, they're bigger than San Diego State. I mean, they're 6'4", 6'5", 320 pounds. So, I mean, that's another concern. So I think we'd start with those two areas. If we're going to have to control the line of scrimmage, make them throw the ball out in space before we tackle it. And then on the other side of the ball, we're going to have to create some room for our run game to get started and get rolling so maybe we can do some other things with our play-action game and so forth. I know it's always tough to play on the road, but you mentioned, you know, the atmosphere, the fans in Montana, and, and the weather is going to be a factor, too. Just kind of talk about those things. Well, I mean, I've coached there several times, it's a, and I've coached a lot of places across the country, and there's, I don't know if there's a better environment for both teams, the home team and the visiting team, to play in. It's a great crowd environment. I know our players will be excited to play there. And uh, you have, as the opponent, you have to be able to deal with that crowd noise. And we'll work hard on that this week. Uh, and we can't let it affect us early in the football game. we got to get out there, play with a lot of emotion, but also play intelligently on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, I think um, on the other side of the weather, you know, we're not used to going to Missoula when it's going to be 86, 87, 88 degrees. <laughs> and so it's going to be a, quite a contrast to the last time we went there when I think it was 10 below zero with the windshield factor. Plus, you're playing on turf, artificial surface, in that stadium. It's going to be 95 degrees, and you got to be able to deal with that part of the element too. But the bottom line thing is when you walk across the stripes and get on the field, you got to play football, and that's the same for them. So uh, we got to play on the same field that they play on in the same weather that the weather's going to be, and uh, both teams need a win. It should be a great college football game. Talk about your overall thoughts on how Andre played. You know, first time with that this new offense, the new style. How do you think he played? I thought he played well. I don't think he played great. I thought he played well. I think he can play better, but I do think he played well. He did some things that caught our attention from the plus side. I thought mentally he was really in tune with what we wanted to do based on what they did, and they did some different things as the game progressed that he actually did some things in the line of scrimmage that helped us, uh, and he did uh, some good things throwing the football. In reality, when he had time, he threw the ball extremely well. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with where Andre is, and I expect him to make a, a big, giant step forward this weekend. Hey, Coach, how, how tough is it to go and play a FBS team in week one and kind of grade where the team is at after that first game? Well, you know, I, you know, I've said this several times, and I'll say it again. I think that you know, when you play FBS schools and you're not playing – the top 15 or 20 teams in the country or a t Southeast Conference team maybe like Montana did, you know, we should compete. I'm going to be honest. We should compete probably better than we competed 
from a competitive standpoint. I'm not pleased with where we were from a competitive standpoint. And I've alluded to a couple of the facts that happened during the course of the game from some of the things we did schematic schematically and technically to some actual technical problems that we had with our headsets. You know, and the, all those things added up to some of our uh, lack of success. Uh, so I think we do have a pretty good handle about where we are because of who we played. We didn't play, you know, Alabama, let's put it that way. And I think San Diego State is a very good football team that should beat any FCS team they play. But on a given Saturday, you never know what could happen. And I think that we probably underachieved a little bit, and that's probably my message to my team. We're better than we played Saturday. Yeah, I, excuse me. I, I know the defense probably a concern, almost 500 yards offense, 49 points. I mean, how concerned are you with the defense? We know they're, they're good, good offense down yeah, there at San Diego State. But What I was going to say is they yeah. ran up about 500 yards on yeah. TCU last year. So, <laughs> you know, and then nine of the guys are back. So we didn't, it's not like we didn't expect them. We didn't expect to go out there and stop them. I just expected to tackle better. We didn't tackle. We tackle in space better. Maybe that 490 is 390 or 400. And maybe that keeps you in the game. And, uh, you know, I think those are the things that I think we're disappointed, that we're extremely disappointed in, is the, probably some of the things that you can do. So the guy got seven yards. It's not 47 yards, you know, because we missed tackles. So if they beat us up front and they knocked us around a little bit and they found some space and he got seven or eight yards, that's still pretty good on their part. But if we tackle them, they, they got to play another play. Well, if you let them get 47 or you blow a coverage for a 54-yard pass on the th fourth or fifth play of the game, that's just not good football. And those are the things we need to improve upon. We need to take care of the business we can take care of and make a team totally out-execute us down the field. And I think in that particular game, we made enough mistakes where we made it a little bit easier on them. What were your impressions on the offense? I mean, you know, as fans and media and everybody, we're getting used to kind of the no-huddle quick offense. Um, it, it seems like it's kind of tough on the defense, too, when they don't get that first down. If it's a three and out, we know in the third quarter it was, I think, four straight three and outs. How tough is it on the defense to get right back on the field if you guys aren't moving well, the ball? Well, first of all, we couldn't run the no huddle offense in the third quarter because we had no headsets. So okay. it's pretty tough to do because everything we're doing is predicated from what person people see upstairs. And from the field vantage point, you can't see. I don't think you guys can't really see what happens out there. You know, we depend on the communication from upstairs to downstairs. And when you go three consecutive series with no upstairs help, and they've made adjustments on the other side of the ball that you can't really see from the field level, there's a reason why we went three and out, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, and that's just a fact. I mean, that's what we depend on right now, and that's what we practiced, is the communication that you're going to get from upstairs, and unfortunately we didn't get it. Offensively, if you look at what we did throughout the first half, and even probably the first, you know, even in the, the probably midway through the first quarter through the rest of the first half, we played pretty well. We moved the ball, we moved the chains, we scored twice. We had a fourth and inches we were going to go for at the end of the half, and unfortunately we had a, probably a freshman mistake that we'll take some responsibility for as well. And, uh, you know, going at halftime, we're going to get the ball back. It's 28 to 14, we're still in the game. And come out and not have the capabilities to do what the opponent has, and that's communicate with each other so you can communicate to the players on the field. That's unfortunate. Now, did it win or lose the game? Probably not. Did it hurt our performance offensively in the second half? I think we got totally out of rhythm. You mentioned about getting back into the game. I mean, you guys kind of got punched in the teeth, as the cliche goes, right out, you know, 14-0 down early. But you guys came back and made it 14-7, 21-14. I mean, what does that say about the team and their performance in the first half? I think it was real positive, especially for the offensive side of the ball. I mean, to come out 14 to nothing, running something to look completely uh, different maybe than what we've done in the past, and to come out and all of a sudden put together a couple of drives. And in that one, the nine or ten play drive we had in the second quarter, if you watched it, San Diego State was starting to spin a little bit. And they were also getting a little fatigued, also getting a little fatigued. And those are the two factors that we're looking to, to have with what we're doing with the variety that we have on offense. We have two different, completely different packages. And you combine that with the fact of the pace that we're going to play at. And I think with some of the speed that we have with the skilled positions, then I think, you know, you can create some problems for some people. And talk about your receivers. I mean, you guys completed, I believe, 7 of 14, so not a lot of passing. But, you know, it's a very young receiving course. It's gotten a lot of attention about who's going to be the guy or the guys. How do you think they performed down there? I think in the pass game itself, they did okay. In the run game, we, had, we still need to be more physical on the, on the perimeter, I'd be honest with you. Even in the first quarter, there was probably maybe some touchdowns to be had if we could finish blocks. Where we got bodies on bodies and got six and seven yards early in the game, uh, I think as the year progresses and we get better and more physical at that, those positions and understand how long they have to hold the, uh, the certain blocks on the perimeter, some of those plays could be big plays for us. So we're closer than maybe uh, we thought when we were on the field watching it and you watch it on film. There were some opportunities there. So I think that's the area of concern right now. I think we need to block the perimeter better, and they're a big part of that. So those who block will play. Three trips into the red zone, three touchdowns. You had to like that. I mean, talk about the team. It's the other ten. 
the other 10 that we weren't too fired up about. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but, you know, I think when you get down there, you, what you're looking to get is seven points. And it's in any game, when you can get the ball to that position where you're threatening the opponent for points and you can get seven instead of three or zero, you're doing the right thing. So I thought we did some really good things once we got the ball inside the 30-yard line, and that's definitely a positive that we're going to take, and we just got to get there more often. And in that game, we had to get there a lot more often. But uh, I think that our players learned a lot from the first game, and it was a good opponent to play because they are good. Uh, so it exposed some of the things we need to work on. You know, Montana, I believe Cal Poly still only won one game up there in Montana, playoff game about six years ago. I mean, how tough is it to play up there and, and come out with a win? Not easy. You know, and I think, you know, one of the things, as much as we're saying how exciting it is for our players to play there and what a great venue they have and what all the things that they do in that town before the Friday, Saturday, I mean, before the game even starts, your attention's got to be in between the white lines. You know, you got to have fun with it because the players are supposed to enjoy the experience of playing. You have to have fun and enjoy it, but there's a certain intensity of football in any sport that has to be from a competitive edge that when you walk onto those white lines, it's all about how we play the game, regardless how many people are there or not. Um... I mean, it's a big game for, like, you know, Eric was saying, somebody's going to go 0-2, and both these teams obviously have playoff aspirations. Um, I know you don't want to talk playoffs. <laughs> it's only the second week, but, I mean, this is a big game, I guess, in terms of well, if you look pulling at that resume, yeah, I guess. Yeah, you look at the first four weeks for both teams. I mean, they're going Tennessee, Cal Poly, Eastern Washington, who should have probably beat Washington this weekend, and Sacramento State, who beat Oregon State. That's their first four. And we're going San Diego State. Montana in Missoula, South Dakota State, who just beat our defending champion, Southern Utah. And then we go Northern Illinois, who just had a very impressive win against Army and probably going to be a ranked team sooner or later as well. So our first four weeks for both teams, so that each, each and every game we play is critical. You know, and I think that's just because we're playing each other and we have that tough road ahead of us makes this game probably a little bit more important in game two of an 11-week season. Okay, and then I just wanted to ask you, uh, just the, the Sacramento State-Oregon State game, I mean, What's your impressions of that? Not that it affects you guys, but I mean. well, I, I said this when Sacramento. When I first went to the Big, I, you know, the commissioner of the Big Sky, Doug Fullerton, asked me, "What's the one team you think can get good in a hurry in this conference?" I said, "Sacramento State's in the, in the state of California. If they recruit the state well and can make some improvements to their facilities, watch out, they're going to be good." And Marshall Spurbeck's done a great job. You know, we had him here a couple years ago, and we played pretty well against him. But I think he's built that program up. They've their facilities have improved tremendously up there. If you haven't been there, thanks to probably USA Track and field, I mean, their facilities are nice. And I think that uh, they have a tremendous opportunity to build on after that win, as long as they can understand how they did it and, and keep it in perspective. But it was a great win for FCS football and Sacramento State in particular.